I hope you guys are doing well. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Boglak Jert. I'm a Hungarian violinist and currently I live in England. I know a lot of you are interested in going abroad to study. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering some questions that I get asked, plus a few of my personal tips on this topic. And just in general talking about my experience of living and studying in England. Please take a moment to click on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bar so you won't miss any future videos. Thank you! So my journey started three years ago when I received a generous scholarship from the Weingarten Memorial Trust. This is a scholarship scheme set up between the Franzis Academy of Music in Budapest and the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. It kind of works like a student exchange program where one place sends around three students to study at the other for one year. And in this scholarship, they are not only covered the tuition fee, but they also have a living cost as well. I'm really grateful for that, since as many of you know, England is a pretty expensive place to live. I've actually always wanted to live in England as well, so it all just seemed like the perfect opportunity that I couldn't miss. And here I am, three years later, and I'm still loving it. My first tip applies mainly to musicians. If you are planning to go abroad, or actually anywhere, research and find a teacher that you like. Don't pick an institution just because of its name. An institution isn't going to make you a better player. It's the teacher who is going to do that. This is important, especially if you're going to be paying a lot of money to do a degree course. You don't want to end up with someone you don't get along with. I might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but my case is slightly different. As I came here thinking that I would only stay here for a year, but then I actually ended up with a wonderful teacher and then I eventually met my boyfriend as well, so I had more reasons to stay. Find a place to live. If you want to live in a student hall, you will need to book your place quite a bit in advance since there is going to be a lot of new students thinking of the same thing and there is limited spaces. It's not the cheapest solution, but the ones I visited in Birmingham are very modern and cool. Plus, it's very close to the campus. If you decide to rent a flat on your own or with a few friends, then you need to be aware that in general, accommodations in the center are going to be pricey. If you go a little further out and you don't mind walking a bit, to be fair, it's, it's a good exercise, then the rent will be much cheaper. I live in a pretty cool old Victorian style house in a quiet area in Edgbaston. We have a beautiful garden with some fruit trees. There's a lake, parks and canals around us too. Well, I love it. One of the first things I had to do was to go to the university and ask for the official documents that confirms that you study here. You're going to need this to open a bank account. I'm with Lloyds Bank. They are very good for students. With this done, I was able to order a SIM card for my phone. I was with GiveGo for a while, which is an online company, and they have some good cheap deals available. Thankfully, the healthcare in the UK is free, so it's really important that when you can get a proof of address from the bank, you must find your nearest GP, which means general practitioner, and register there. If you are coming from the EU before you leave your country though, make sure your European health insurance card is valid. Be mentally and emotionally prepared for this. Moving to another country where you don't know anybody is quite a big step and you're likely to feel homesick at some point. You know, it's not like you have moved to another city so you won't be able to just pop by your family's place when you miss them. Which leads to my next tip. To help you with this, I'd recommend bringing things that makes you feel comfortable like at home. When I moved here, I made sure to leave enough space for things like, well, it might sound mad, but my favorite spoon, my favorite mug, which is the same age as me, and my sleeping pillow, which is in the background. Make sure you attend the welcome week meetings so you know what's going on during the week. Stuff like 
orchestra auditions and choosing module options. I like it to be in this period. But it's just good to get to know how your course works since you're here to study. Go and socialize. It's really great to have friends that you can hang out with, especially if you don't know anyone. In UK universities, we have a week or two before the term starts in September called the Freshers Week, where there is a whole lot of events organized by the student council of the university so that the new students can meet each other and have a good time. But there are plenty of other events that's quieter for those who are not so keen on the party scene. Travelling is rather expensive in the UK. Unfortunately, I don't have a car. And as a musician, I do need to get around to places often. The cheapest solution is usually getting the coach. Although it does take more time and you have to take traffic into account. If you do want to travel by train, try book tickets early as possible. Just keep an eye out for advanced tickets, which is a time and route specific ticket and non-refundable, but it will give you a huge discount. I would recommend downloading the Trainline app so you can see both fares at once. Don't be afraid to speak the local language, otherwise what's the point of being in a different country? If you're coming to the UK door, just an advice. Use please and thank you often. Most people are very polite here. People joke that it's always raining in the UK. Well. It's actually kind of true. It's not like monsoon season all the time, but just light, gentle rain and it could be quite cold, so make sure to pack warm clothes. I get as often about when to buy flight tickets. The only thing I can say is that look early as possible. Try to get here by the time the welcome week starts, so sometime in the first two weeks of September and look on Skyscanner, they have a way that you can look for the cheapest ticket in a month. Um, although if you need to carry your instrument on the plane with you, always check with the airline company first before you buy the ticket. Here's a little extra tip if you want to get a flavor of English culture whilst you study here. Fish and chips. I would recommend going to a small shop which are known as chippies rather than a restaurant. Have an afternoon tea. This is basically a big plate of sandwiches, corn, sweets and lots of tea. You just don't get anything like this anywhere else. You are probably going to drink a lot of tea. Visit some pubs. There are so many lovely places with great vibes that you can visit. So here are my tips from my own experience of living and studying in the UK. I hope these were helpful for you and good luck!